The next speaker is Gabriel Kuwebin from the Free Software Foundation Europe. Gabriel is a legal coordinator with the FSFE. His talk is about best practices, but also deviations in licensing software and about displaying copyright and licensing information. Hello, everybody. Uh, to give you an introduction, my name is Gabriel and I am the legal coordinator at the Free Software Foundation Europe, or the FSFE for short, here in Berlin in Germany. So I'm not a developer, I'm a lawyer. My interest when working with free software is to try to ensure that the rights of individuals, both developers and users, are upheld when they participate in a digital society. Uh, we think that the best way to achieve this is to use free software, which promises access, transparency and cooperation in digital tools that we all have to use to participate in society today. So to that end, I'm here to talk about the next generation Internet, also known as the NGI initiative. Now, this is a project launched by the European Commission that aims to shape what the Internet will be in the coming years. Now, what exactly does this mean? So essentially, it means that the Internet must be a platform that embodies values that we hold dear in a free and open society. These are values such as openness, inclusivity, transparency, privacy, cooperation and security, such as the protection of data. The idea is that with these values in place, the Internet can be a platform that supports human rights, democracy and a more progressive and enlightened society. I think that these are very lofty goals indeed that we should all aspire to when we develop digital technology. So how does the NGI initiative intend to do this? The idea is to provide assistance to individual researchers and developers who are working on new technologies or software projects that have the potential to contribute to the values of this new internet. Now this comes in the form of both financial assistance and technical assistance. At the end of the involvement with NGI, the software will be made available as free software. So in order to provide this assistance, the NGI initiative has set up NGI Zero. Now, NGI Zero is basically a consortium of about 13 NGOs, of which FSFE is a member. Now, these organizations are focused on various topics, such as security, translations, inclusivity, uh, etc., etc. Uh, they will advise each successful applicant project on their topic of expertise to improve the project's technical proficiency in that area. So there are currently two actions in NGI Zero, nicknamed PET and Discovery. Now, the NGI Zero Privacy and Trust Enhancing Technologies, known as NGI Zero PET, uh, assists projects that are developing privacy and trust enhancing technologies. Um, I'll give you an example of a successful applicant to the PET pro uh, program. We have an app called Briar involved. Now, Briar is a secure messaging app designed with activists, journalists, civil society groups, and also persecuted minorities in mind. Now, these groups of people often disengage with some aspects of digital connectivity in modern life uh, in order to avoid intimidation, retribution, surveillance, and other types of dangers. So Briar is a dedicated communication tool that helps these people, that allows for people like this to relay encrypted messages that are synchronized directly between user devices. This protects users and their relationships from surveillance, and Briar is currently receiving assistance through, through the NGI initiative. The NGI Search and Discovery program, or NGI Zero Discover, uh, will assist software pro projects that enhance user access to search for and to discover information on the internet. So I'll give you an example of a software project involved here called Plaudit. Now, we tend to have limited access to papers and academic articles from universities. Access to scientific research uh, tends to be limited. Now, this should not be the case, especially when, this, when these universities are supported with public tax money. 
So Plaudit is a tool that allows the academic community to endorse valuable and important research. It makes these endorsements available as open data. So users of Plaudit, uh, users of these, this tool, can more easily discover and disseminate scientific and academic knowledge. So how does it work for a developer then? Now, what happens is, if you are a developer of a new piece of software uh, that can fit into the requirements of the PET or discovery programs, then you can apply to join. Now, every two months, the programs will evaluate the applications and accept a new batch of approved software projects. If your project is accepted, then you qualify to receive funding as well as assistance from the NGI Zero Consortium. Now, when I say every two months, uh, the programs will evaluate the applications. That means that the next deadline for the current call for, pro for projects uh, is on the 1st of June 2020. And if you miss that deadline, uh, don't panic because there will be another call, uh, the deadline of which will be 1st of August 2020. Now, what do you get from the FSFE then? For the FSFE, uh, our involvement is basically to provide assistance with free software licenses. Uh, in particular, we want to make sure that for all the successful applicants to the PET or Discovery programs, firstly, their license information is accurate, and secondly, that they are presented in a manner that is in accordance with best practices. And for us, this is established with the FSFE's reuse initiative. Now, to help ensure that license information is accurately presented and that the licenses within a project uh, are compatible, we want, to help develop, uh, we want to help educate developers about free software legal and licensing issues. Uh, in order to accomplish this, we have developed a series of FAQs on the basics of free software legal and licensing issues. These are not only available for the project participants, but also to the public at large. So if any of you have an interest in reading up on legal issues related to free software, uh, you can visit download.fsfe.org slash ngi0 and download our documents for reading. Now these documents will explain to you the concepts of copyright, the rights that you have when you own a copyright over a piece of code or software, um, how developers can license their software, and the kind of obligations that come with that. Now, a little word of warning. We are currently in the middle of cleaning up these documents, and we are still doing some edits on them. So there might be times when either the page is down or the documents are not available for viewing temporarily. Uh, if so, then apologies in advance, but please do be patient, and they'll be up and running well soon enough. Uh, reuse compliance. Now, another thing that we will do is to check for reuse compliance. Um, or what this means is that we check that uh, your license and uh, copyright information is displayed uh, in accordance with best practices. Now, reuse is an FSFE initiative. What it does is to spread awareness of best practices for how to display your license and copyright information in free software projects. One problem that can happen with free software projects is that um, when people want to reuse elements of uh, free software and to incorporate it into their own projects, they don't include the copyright and licensing information in their repositories, or it's not very easy to find. The urge to find a standardized solution for this problem was the impetus to create the reuse initiative. Uh, it's to ensure that you can easily find out what a license, uh, what license a file is licensed under, and who owns the copyright. So, Reuse has a linter tool which you can run in your repositories to make sure that your license information is properly displayed. Now, if you're involved in the NGI Zero program, we will help you run this linter tool on all the projects to check if they are adopting these best practices and then we will make recommendations on how each project can improve. So yes, get involved and apply. If you are currently working on a software project that fits these criteria,
that fits the criteria of the next generation internet and that fits into either the PET or the discovery program, then please do apply. Or if you know of any developers who are currently working on software that fits the profiles of one of these programs, then please do encourage them to apply as well. So please help us spread word about this opportunity for funding and technical assistance and yeah, help uh, developers get the, the help that they need to develop their software to the fullest potential. So thank you all for your attention and please feel free to email me your questions about the NGI initiative directly.